Money has always been an issue for Karen and Andy, but for Karen, her son Mike is always the priority. So when she wanted to sell Andy's old, unused car to raise some money to take care of Mike, she never expected him to resist the way he did. But when she opened the trunk, she quickly discovered his shocking reasons. But why did Andy not want to sell the mysterious vehicle under any circumstances? What big secret did Karen discover in the car trunk? And what would this discovery mean for the future of this family and their three-year-old son? Karen finally made her way into the storage unit in which her husband's car was stashed. Why was it so difficult for her to get to it? It had become obvious that her husband did not want her to see this car, but there didn't seem anything abnormal about it. But then she walked around it. Karen got the shock of her life when seeing what was in the trunk of the car. She immediately got really worried about what could be hidden in there. Suddenly a million different things started coming back to her. Her husband's strange behavior, the argument, the strange excuses, everything. Karen ordered her son to stay back as she reached for the handle on the trunk with shaking hands. It popped open when she pressed it, revealing its contents. Karen could not believe it, but to truly understand the gravity of this find, a bit of backstory is required. Karen is a regular old Texan-born woman who is living with Andy, her husband of five years, and her three-year-old son Allison. The pair have known each other for close to 10 years now and always felt like they were meant for each other. But 10 years is a long time in which a lot can change. They live a simple but satisfactory life. Andy works and Karen is mostly a stay-at-home mom, taking care of the house and little Mike. The small family may not have a lot of money, but they try to make it all work and Karen is not the complaining type. However, even though Karen feels that she and Andy do have a very good relationship, they do undertake a lot of things separately. They are both very much still their own individual and like to sometimes have their space. Things have been this way since the start of their relationship and have raised some questions before. There is a stereotype that couples are supposed to always want to do everything together, but their way of keeping their individuality alive has always worked well for the couple. But what Karen will soon find out is that she knows a lot less about what Andy does in this alone time than she thought. Karen mostly spends her own time with friends and family. Allison often joins her in this, but there have also been a lot of times she just stayed with her father. They mostly just play together at home or go for walks when the weather is nice. At least, that's what they tell Karen. While Karen is always very open and talkative about what she does in her alone time, because she has always felt like communication is the key to making a relationship like this work. Andy, however, had always been a lot more secretive about what he does when he's away. Karen was beginning to wonder. Karen doesn't necessarily feel like Andy is hiding something from her. He does talk to her about everything. He just doesn't go into great detail. He would say, I went fishing, but would not talk about what he caught, for example. He always just tells her the bare minimum. This did not make Karen feel great. Karen always found this a bit disappointing. One of the only real issues she has with her relationship with Andy is that he was not very talkative in general. She mostly has to keep the conversations going and while she was very happy with most other parts of the relationship, this did start to bother her more and more. Karen had hoped that maybe there would be a change in Andy's talkativeness with the birth of their son Mike, but it only proved to make it worse. Andy really seemed to start to close off more and more towards Karen. Now she was starting to feel like it was having a real negative effect on their relationship. She could not figure out if he was starting to fall out of love with her or if maybe he was hiding something. She still had no idea what he did in his alone time and getting more information about it out of him felt like pulling teeth. She grew ever more nervous. Her urge to say something about this to Andy or ask for an explanation got stronger by the day, but Karen always found a way to push it to the back of her mind again. She knew that it would be a bad idea to confront Andy with her worries and Karen had a good reason for this. She could not bear the thought of putting the relationship at risk in any way. While Andy was not a good husband to her anymore, he still was a very good father to their son Mike, who he obviously loved very much. And on top of that, if they lost his income, she would be in financial ruin. But even with Andy still making money for the family, their financial situation was getting consistently worse. Life was getting more and more expensive with their child growing and Andy was not making more money to compensate. Quite the opposite even. He had started working a day less every week without Karen knowing. 
Karen had found out when she was attempting to buy groceries one day near the end of the month and she apparently had insufficient funds. Karen always calculated how much she could spend without going over balance based on their income. She had stayed well within this limit this month. She confronted Andy about it. Andy immediately went on the defensive when Karen confronted him with the discovery she had made. He told her that he had felt very overworked in the last couple of months and felt like he needed more free time to himself to keep from getting burned out. Karen was of course still frustrated that she couldn't buy groceries. Karen could understand this to some extent. It had to be hard on Andy being the only provider for a whole household. But what she had a real problem with was that Andy did not communicate this to her. Just like always seemed to happen. Andy's reaction to this surprised her. He got annoyed at Karen's anger and, in his words, unfounded distrust. They had always left each other their space and Karen had never before made such a big deal about keeping something to himself. Then why was this suddenly such a big problem? Andy felt like she was encroaching on his personal time. They got into a big argument over this. Karen could not believe that Andy was taking a stand against her like this. She always was so forthcoming about what it was she did in her personal time, and she would tell him more if he ever asked. The argument ended with Andy commenting that Karen was not allowed to comment on his work decisions if she wasn't working herself. This comment hurt Karen very much and she ran away from the confrontation crying. She had been trying to find work for months now, ever since their financial situation started to go south but she had been unsuccessful so far mainly because of her lack of experience and education. This was something that she struggled with for a long time. When Karen was growing up, her parents didn't consider her education to be important whatsoever. Karen was the youngest of five children, and while all of her brothers and sisters got good educations and eventually jobs, Karen's life was incredibly different. Karen's parents had a very different plan for her they had always intended for Karen to take care of them when they retired. They didn't allow her to pursue an education and she had no time for a job either as she was always working in and around the house, cooking and cleaning for her parents who thought they deserved the right to now just sit with their feet up. This went on till Karen was 18 years old. She was then at an age where she could start to make decisions for herself and the law could not just send her back home without question. She had been planning for that day for a while without her parents knowing and moved out one day after her birthday. Her parents were furious with her but Karen did not care. She was not going back. For the first couple of months, she was mostly couch surfing at her siblings' houses. She even had to spend some time living in homeless shelters and had experiences there that she never wanted to think about again. But this all stopped when she met Andy. Karen was having a drink with her sister at the bar when she was approached by a handsome young man. It was a case of love at first sight and she moved in with him only a few weeks after they first met. Everything looked so promising back then. Moving in with each other after a few weeks of course provided a lot of challenges, but Karen and Andy seemed to make it through with flying colors. Karen had finally felt like life was smiling down on her and getting pregnant with Allison was just icing on the cake but she felt like everything was now getting jeopardized. When Karen had calmed down a bit, she came back downstairs to finish her conversation with Andy, but he was no longer there. On the counter was a note that stated, sorry for what I've said, I've gone fishing. Karen was upset that he just left without really resolving anything, but an apology was already more than she would normally get. Over the next couple of weeks, the financial situation of the couple started to get truly dire, Karen was trying to make a plan detailing how to get more money through the door without Andy having to work more. She found that the only real way she could think of was to sell a couple of things, and she knew just where to start. She knew that Andy had an old car in storage that he wasn't using anymore. He always told her that he kept it for sentimental value because it was his very first car. Karen had talked about selling it before, but he had always declined it. But this was before all of their current money troubles. Karen was sure that if she brought it up now to Andy, he would be a lot more open to the idea. He knew that because he was working less they really needed the money, and with their three-year-old son in the world right now, it should be a no-brainer for him. But Andy's answer greatly surprised Karen. Andy was not open to the idea of selling his old car at all. Karen felt like she was giving good arguments, but Andy wouldn't budge. What frustrated Karen greatly was that he did not give a single good argument for his decisions. It was just a hard no and that was that. 
Karen got really angry with Andy again. She asked him what the alternatives were but Andy could not give her any. Going to work full-time also wasn't an option for him, and when Karen suggested it she was met with the familiar response that she could also just get a job. Their argument continued until their daughter walked into the room crying. The young girl had been awoken by all the loud yelling coming from downstairs and was afraid of what was happening. It was not the first time that Allison had walked in on the pair having a heated dialogue, and Karen was afraid of what Allison might think of her parents. Karen picked up her son and brought him back to bed. She tried to calm her down and told her not to worry about it, but Kim just kept asking her why she and Daddy were fighting. The discussion between her and Andy was done for now but not resolved whatsoever. Karen stayed awake all night thinking about everything that had happened. She was considering divorcing Andy and taking their daughter with her somewhere else. But where would she go? They had no money and the struggle would only worsen. Plus there was a feeling that she simply could not ignore. She knew in her heart that she still loved Andy and that she didn't want to leave him. But she also knew that this situation could not continue on its current trajectory. Something had to change and when the sun almost started to come up again, Karen had finally made her decision. She would go to the storage unit when Andy would be at work that day. She would do this without him knowing about it. Karen felt like this was the only right decision for her family at this moment. She took the keys out of Andy's hiding spot, where she had seen him put them away once and left with Allison. She knew at what storage location Andy was keeping his car. She'd seen a bill for it once, but when she finally arrived, Karen was denied entrance by an employee standing guard. Karen assumed that because she had her husband's last name, she could just enter his storage unit, but she was very wrong. Apparently, Andy had given instructions that only he could enter the storage unit. Karen tried everything in her power to convince the guard, but it was to no avail. She continued to make herself a nuisance though. Eventually, the manager was called because the employee could not be bothered to sort this mess out himself. The manager didn't really seem to care. When Karen showed him that she was not only Andy's wife, but that she also had the keys, he allowed her access to the storage unit. It seemed like he just was not in the mood for a big discussion and their standard policy was that anybody with the key and ID could enter. All this did make Karen think. Did Andy expect her to come to her and call the head? Or did he have these instructions in place from the moment he got the storage unit? What was he hiding from her? What can be so special about this car? And was it even about the car at all? The employee had pointed Karen in the right direction and after that, he left her alone to explore the storage unit, but not before giving her even more surprising information. It turned out that Andy had come here at least once a week for almost three years now, and lately even more than normal. He had been coming on the day that he wasn't working, spending almost all day in his storage unit. Karen had asked the employee if he knew what her husband had been doing in there, but the employee had no idea. It was not their business what customers did with the unit as long as it was not illegal. With the employee has returned back in the direction of the entrance, Karen was now standing in front of her husband's storage unit. Her hands were almost shaking at this point. Was this going to fix their financial problems? Karen put the key in the lock of the storage unit and tried to open it. The door was heavy and Karen was struggling to push it up. Even Little Mike was trying to help. The two of them struggled for a bit and Karen was afraid someone would think they weren't supposed to be there. When they finally succeeded in pushing the door up, Karen switched on the light and the contents of the storage unit were revealed to her. In the middle of the storage unit was the big black car she had thought so much about selling over the last couple of days. Looking at it, she was still wondering what made Andy so against selling it. It was not even in good shape and they had a much nicer car now. But the old black car was not the only thing in the room. Against the wall stood a sort of wooden construction that she recognized but could not place. In the corner, something large and straight-edged was covered up and a camera on a tripod stood near it. Were they being watched? Karen had no idea what she was looking at. She walked into the storage unit towards the large object in the corner that was being covered by a gray tarp. But before she got there, something else caught her eye that made her gasp for air and she immediately told Allison to leave the storage unit. On the handle of the black car's trunk, she noticed a handprint in red and streams of red that had been dripping down. Karen's first thought immediately went to the worst case scenario. Could this be what she thought it was? With her heart beating out of her chest, she kicked the car trunk open. 
For a second, Karen could not make sense of what she was seeing, but then she figured out that it was a bunch of painting supplies. She was very thankful it wasn't something worse. Stumped with confusion, she turned around and pulled the tarps from the large object, revealing the strangely shaped object hiding under it. It turned out to be a big stack of canvases. A lot seemed to be unused, but she noticed that some of them had been painted already. And these paintings actually looked good. Did Andy make these? And if so, why would he have been hiding this talent for her? Still very confused, she decided to call Andy and admit what she had done and was planning to do. There was no point in hiding it and she needed answers. When Andy heard what had happened, he let out a big sigh instead and reluctantly started to explain the situation to Karen. He had been wanting to be a painter for years, but knew that doing it with all the financial trouble they had would have never been approved by Karen. But he hoped he could make money by selling his art and had been trying to really get that going for three years now. Sadly unsuccessful for the most part, but he recently hit a big break. Somebody had liked and shared his art online and the orders started coming in recently. This is why he had started to work a day less. He was planning on telling Karen when the money had come in. Karen felt a lot of emotions upon hearing this story, but mostly relief. They decided to talk more that evening and managed to work everything out. Andy could start painting at home and Karen sold the car. Andy's paintings gained more and more popularity and he even managed to make up for the loss of income from working less and then some. The family was able to get back on their feet and they were happier together than they had been in a long time.